fingers on buzzers that you don't actually have, I would like to ask you, first off, your favorite species. My oldest love is the North Atlantic right whale. It's the first species I studied. There's only about 350 of them left on the planet, highly endangered. I think of them as the goth, the goths of the um, whale world. How loud is the loudest whale? Well, I think the loudest organic noise on the planet is made by the blue whale, um, but I don't have how many decibels. In a, in a way, the more interesting question is, is the distance that the sound can travel, yeah. right? You know, from, from one ocean basin to the other. Which species has the largest testicles? Uh, I, I think we got to go with bowheads on that one. They're like the size of washing machines. I know that the testicles of a right whale weigh a ton. Yeah, so yeah, I think bowheads just, just edge out. They're, both, they're all the same. They're very closely related. So it just edges out a bit. Have, okay, they both have a lot going for them in the testicle uh, <laughs> sense. Do whales dream? That's a very tricky question to answer, isn't it? I mean, one assumes that when we go through, you know, rapid eye movement sleep as humans, that we are, lots of things are going on. Important neurological processes are happening when we sleep. Um, so one would assume that there are some similar neurological processes that happen, but what we have to bear in mind is that whales and dolphins are voluntary breathers. So um, they, we know that dolphins, for example, keep one half of their brain awake, semi-awake, even when they're resting, so that they can continue to surface and breathe. So. Probably something happens, but whether it's exactly the same as our dreaming, I don't know. Voluntary breathers. Could I just double click on that? What, what's, what do you mean by that? Well, you might not believe it, but actually you're an involuntary breather, which means that you cannot die by holding your breath. I see what you're so, saying. So they have to make a choice every time. Presumably it's evolutionarily advantageous that if you're continuing to hunt and you're really desperate for air, but you can continue to hold your breath, that might potentially save your life. Um, and we know this from um, post-mortem evidence of small cetaceans caught in nets, that rather than drown, they actually asphyxiate. So they're able to hold their breath um, right until they die, which is not something that we can do. Are there gay whales or dolphins? Well, we know that there are in other taxa, I think there are some, there's some evidence so one would assume that why, if that was the case, that there would be potential for it. But I don't know that we've ever got evidence. I should just uh, pick up on the word taxa. I think there'll be, there'll be some people uh, saying taxa. What's that? So in other species, yeah. So, so we do have evidence, or there is some evidence in other species. What does whale poo smell like? It varies a lot. Uh, right whales, if you get it on your clothes, you might as well throw your clothes away. It's the stench that's so strong, you can smell it easily from 100 meters away. Dogs can smell it from uh, a, couple, a kilometer or two. Um, and it smells kind of sour, uh, there's some sulfur, briny, uh, complex, but then something like a humpback whale when they're feeding on uh, fish, barely any smell at all. It, I had mentioned earlier that sort of oversteeped tea you're seeing, it's just a few scales maybe, and it, it's pretty mild, so uh, it can vary, but watch out for the right whale. Their breath smells awful too. Um, wow. Okay, thank you. Uh, related, do whales and dolphins fart? I have seen photos of bubbles coming up from the butts. Uh, so I don't know whether it's a fart or not, but there are a couple of pictures out there. Everything's on the internet um, showing some bubbles coming from that area. So if that's a fart, yeah. What was your best whale or dolphin encounter? It was an event where we took some officials that were wanted to talk about whaling out on a boat in Kaikoura and we went to see sperm whales but we were lucky enough that we saw sperm whales, um, dusky dolphins, a lot of dusky dolphins that were displaying a lot, various kinds of um, mollymorph and albatross, seals and also right at the end closer to the shore we saw Hector's dolphins and then 
and then as we pulled up towards the mountains watching the the hector's dolphins they uh the um, skipper put uh louis armstrong's it's a it's a wonderful world and that, and you know there was a moment of like this is this is just biodiversity laid out for you there i mean if you don't want to protect this then frankly it's time to give up i think so yeah for, for me that would be one that was the nexus between the biological world and the human political world that was really really poignant for me personally and for me you know if you work spend time on the water you spend a lot of time looking at empty ocean you know and and that gives you time to think and and i actually value probably not seeing whales almost not as much but almost the same way because it gives you that time right to think to get up to come up with some new new ideas but then coming upon an area where you can see dozens of, of highly endangered species like the North Atlantic right whale. I'll never forget the first time I saw one of these, these large groups and it gave me an opportunity to think about what the oceans were like in the past and what they can be like in the future if you make good decisions. What's the best novel about whales or dolphins? Well, Moby Dick is, is too easy for me. I mean, I, I love Moby Dick, so I, I don't think there's anything that's come out that, that can rival that. Yeah, 100% agree. Will we ever be able to communicate with whales or dolphins? So, I mean, arguably, we're already doing that in a way because, um, you know, every time that a whale or dolphin chooses not to be where we are, <laughs> we're communicating. What would you say, if you could say something to a whale or a dolphin, what might you say? I'm sorry. Sounds. And if we could understand them, what might they say? Maybe get over yourselves. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know. Would you rather be a whale or a human? In, in present times, it's probably better that to be a human. But but historically, you know, there would have been there would have been the age of the whale when when a, being a whale was a pretty good deal. Um, but, but right now it's, it's a rough time, but yeah, I'll stick to humans for now. Not because we're better or really, cause I prefer it, but just cause it's a little safer. I feel lucky to be a human, I think. And, uh, and that's, you know, I feel lucky that I do have opposable thumbs and that I can communicate with you in this way and all those kinds of things. But that's maybe because I don't fully understand what it's like to be a whale. And, um, maybe if I understood that more. That, you know, I might think differently about the choice. Do you think they get jealous? Like, you know, we know other mammals other than humans, like dogs do. I don't have any empirical evidence to support that, and it would be quite hard to collect, but we do have some evidence that uh, whales mourn, they, you know, that they will repeatedly uh, go back to the location of uh, dead individuals or raise calves to the surface. So this is, you know, interpreted as potentially being grief. And there's, you know, quite a lot, I think 138 studies were collected to, to um, show evidence that this might be grief. Um, but again, I think I would always go back to the continuum, you know, Darwin's biological continuum, which is just thinking about if, if emotions are useful for us, for binding us all together and getting us to cooperate, we know that whales and dolphins cooperate and you know, need each other biologically a great deal. So for them, emotions are likely quite useful too. How we go about measuring them is a different question. It's reasonable to assume they have as great a range of emotion as us, perhaps in a different way, or, but is that reasonable to assume or? Um, they may have totally different emotions to us. You know, we, again, it's, 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 uh, it's easy to look at it through our glasses. But I mean, how Whitehead has conjectured previously that because the oceans are so uh, patchy, you know, resources are available only in, in certain places, that rather than we're very individualistic, it suits us biologically to be very individualistic. It's all about me and what I can achieve and protecting myself and my family. Um, that for whales and dolphins, whales particularly, he was thinking about sperm whales in this context, I think, was that perhaps they have a sense of us rather than a sense of I. Oh, so, yeah. so, and maybe that is why we see these otherwise 
strange things like mass strandings in some of the tooth whale species is that when I'm sick in this in this discussion if I've got a cold I've got a cold but perhaps with a whale and dolphin if you've got an earache we've all got an earache is was kind of was the place that, that this idea of sort of extending the hive mind idea goes to and again these are this is just conjecture and we we don't know um, but it's you know it's worth thinking about the different ways in which others might be perceiving the world including their relationships with other individuals thank you i'm going to, I'm going to uh, ask one more from the remaining questions um i know i'm going to ask two at once how many whales are are there now and can we save them among whales and dolphins millions i suppose um can we save them absolutely we've shown that we've been able to uh, make changes in a pretty short time to the way we we think about whales the and how we manage them i don't you know as, as one word but uh, we certainly can do it but i don't have a number do you know do we know how many whales there used to be we, before we've, we... we've spent quite a bit of time on that um genetics we've done some genetic analysis suggests that, that it was quite high and a lot of for a lot of species higher than the log books suggest but those are the two ways we approach it how many whales do we know were killed? And then you can think about how many there were in the past. Or you can look just like you can for humans. If you look at humans, we're actually all pretty much alike because we went through a bottleneck not that long ago. Whereas whales were almost seeing something different, that historically they were quite abundant and now they're going through their bottleneck. Uh, then I can say comfortably millions. In the past, for sure, great whales. Absolutely, there were millions.